A Chinese immigrant in San Francisco who was attacked violently three times in the past seven years randomly on the street has finally decided to move back to his homeland, giving up on his life in America. Yeah, this is uh, going viral in several Asian circles right now. It's sparking a lot of discussion, guys. We are going to cover it. Of course, give our own two cents. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Of course, uh, Andrew, we're just wishing Rongxing Liao some peace, man, mm. because this guy had a horrible attack caught on camera, multiple other attacks documented by police. Um, let's just read the headline here. 87-year-old grandfather has decided to move back to China after being attacked in San Francisco three different times. Here is uh, some screen caps from him being drop kicked. Uh, you know, it's just like... It's sparking a lot of internet discussion right now mm -hmm. because a lot of people are saying, you know, where are we headed as a country? Where is San Francisco headed right. as a city? Right. Now, I mean, San Francisco has <laughs> been discussed many, many times, even on this channel. And obviously, if you look at the policies, everything down to who was former Chesa Boudin to now the mayor to the DA, whatever it is. I'm not, again, an expert on SF policy, but I can tell you this. A lot of people are sick and tired of whatever's going on. But um, I think this is a story because obviously one of the attacks was very high profile. Everybody talked about it. We talked about it. Um, it was part of the whole kind of Asian hate wave of attacks, right? And now he's finally going back. And I feel like I honestly empathize so much with him. And I can only empathize as much as I can. But in a way, like I, I, I'm trying to understand where his mind is at. And it makes complete sense to move back. What, what, I guess, what are you saying is the logic behind I, it? Obviously, listen, he was attacked seven years ago. He was beaten unconscious. There's a video yeah. of him being drop kicked while he's in his yeah, wheelchair. Clearly, Four months ago, he has a documented case being punched multiple times while walking yeah. to Walgreens in the Soma L district. Listen, he's 87 years old. He has a youngest son who is living in China. He had also a son out in America, right? That was kind of like sort of taking care of him. But it clearly... His life in America is he's not in the right environment and he's not going to be happy. And he's thinking, listen, the net, if he does get attacked again, we don't know what's going to happen. Maybe he passes after that attack. Does he want to pass on the street in SF? Does he want to be in China in his homeland where he's in actually Guangzhou, from? Yeah. You know, and, and that makes a lot of sense and I feel for him. But I think this is one of those, I think like cases that it kind of reminds me of like, I heard stories of after World War II and after the Japanese were interned, right? Something that was so traumatic to so many Japanese Americans. A lot of them who were Japanese born but living in America and even some Japanese Americans moved back to Japan actually after some time because they were just like, yo, I lost everything in America. My life in America is not the same. I'm going to move back. Right. So so it's, it's similar. You went through this trauma. America is a great country. It's great. But, like, not everybody's situation is great, and definitely the way they're running and that city. And it doesn't city, turn out great for everybody. No, and it's not great for everybody. Of course not. Um, so, clearly, his situation is not going to improve in very quickly, and he's already getting really old. He's going to have his peace back in China. Um, yeah, we're going to get into the breakdown, some quick thoughts right now. Um, he does live around the Tenderloin District. It's known as a, like, the drug area. That's a tough place to live, man, for anybody, even if you're uh, young. But especially the elderly, women, smaller people, people who are not accustomed to dealing yeah. with that environment. Yeah. He actually, a lot of people are like, oh, how doesn't he know? Wasn't he, didn't he come to America? He actually only came to America 24 years ago. So he might, he didn't, it's not like he grew up mm. on the mean streets of the Tenderloin, right, right, like right. navigating it. No, right? and obviously I'm sure him being in the Tenderloin, it wasn't by fully choice. I'm sure if he had the means and family members could fit him into their lives that he would live somewhere else, but I don't know exactly their family situation. But he did say, quote, like, I don't want to be kind of like a burden on my son's life anymore, and I don't want him to worry about me here, so I'm going to go back to China where it's safer, and this thing is not likely to happen. Obviously, he goes back to China, his homeland, David. He gets to speak Cantonese all he wants. He's going to be with other older people that maybe he grew up with, people that he left behind. Obviously, his... 24 year journey in America did not pan out maybe to what he wanted. So he has the option of going right, back. Right, right. So my question is this, do you think more and more elderly, let's just say Chinese are going to be doing this? The ones who have some connection back home still, do you think they're going to be moving back home? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, dependent on the support system they'll have because obviously he has a son that moved back to Guangzhou right. as well. And plus, it's not to say that his whole 24-year thing was like failed in the sense of like if he gave birth to some kids or whatever. Or, like, right, you're right. You know what I mean? Got some his grandkids better job opportunities. Mm. But yeah, in terms of his own risk exposure on the street walking through bad neighborhoods, yeah, it was horrible. You know no, what I mean? His, like the, his own life in America is not looking good. The trajectory is not looking good, so he's just going to yeah, move I'm, dude, and take himself go, out of this environment. Dude, go to Guangzhou. He can eat that Chen Chen Gong Fu. Chen, Chen Gong yeah, Fu. The, I mean, the, 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 the. Guangzhou is super chill. It's a chill place to live. Yeah, I mean, I think um, you got to analyze your situation. What's the opportunity cost? What's the risk exposure? Here's the thing, man. Different zip codes or different neighborhoods in America are becoming even more variable. They were always variable, but I think in 2024, like the fishbowl, America's made of many, 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 many fishbowls. The fishbowls are even becoming more disparate mm. in terms of uh, potential outcomes. You mean variants, like the, uh, you mean the highs and the lows of a neighborhood yeah. are getting larger. The disparity yeah, yeah. between the highs and the lows. Yeah. The lows are getting lower. Yes. And the highs are getting higher. The rich people are getting richer. There's more high rises, more luxury buildings, but also maybe there's more people in trouble. And, and to your point about people moving back, I could see people moving around too. Uh, you know, it's funny. Some people could move from like Oakland to San Gabriel Valley, but we know people who move from Roland Heights, which is a nice place in San Gabriel Valley, to Tempe, Arizona, which is a new Asian enclave. If you guys know, it's outside of Phoenix. So I just think... Um, there's pros and cons to every environment, every situation. You just got to analyze your own individual situation. And it's like, uh, it's not going to be, the answer is not going to be the same for everybody. You have mm -hmm. to analyze your own individual situation based off your individual metrics, opportunity costs, of course, opportunities and capacities, depending on where you're moving. All right, let's get in the comments section. Somebody said, my elder relatives in the Bay Area are thinking the same. They're retirees. The cost is high and the crime is up and they're getting targeted so why don't they just go back? Because, Andrew, it is true. Uh, like, labor costs in China of getting a caretaker and, like, food costs would be way lower. Yeah, and it's true. Like they said, like, hey, their children have done a lot better economically. If they send that money back, the money's going to go a lot further Stretch in more, China. right? Yeah. Right, and I think for elderly Chinese retirees, bro, it makes sense because, like, the retiree life in China, like... If I'm young, I'm not moving, like, well, first of all, I'm not from China, so I wouldn't move back. But I'm saying, like, for them who literally were born and raised there, came here, saw their family, get great opportunities in America, make something of themselves, and now they're kind of like, hey, I just want to, like, have a peaceful elderly life, and I'm not going right. to get that in America and, because and, the crime is going crazy. And isn't it like Guangzhou changed a lot in 24 years? I'll tell you this, Guangzhou changed a lot even in, like, the last... 12 yeah. years. Yeah, that's You know, not, the WeChats and they got dude, the DD Chus and dude, all that. And just to say, just because elderly Chinese people are moving back to China, that doesn't mean China as a country is all of a sudden all good all around. I'm just saying, literally, if you're trying to live a humble, peaceful life that's super Chinese, yeah. yes. Yeah, you get he in can't China. go and like write whatever he wants about like the government or whatever, yeah. but I'm sure he has no. He's chilling, he's yeah. Not he's, even on his mind. He's not know? trying to do too much, so yeah. Um, of course, Andrew, there was a lot of questions. Why is he walking in those bad neighborhoods? Tenderloin is known as a drug in a bad area. Um, I'm not blaming the victim, but why don't you be aware of your surroundings? Other people are like, bro, a lot of people don't have the privilege to live in nicer, safer places. That's maybe all he could afford. He likes the walkability of it. Um, what do you think of this? Because a lot of people are like, oh, well, why don't these Asian elders just uh, get out of that zone? You know what I mean? Because a lot of Asian elders, it's true, they're in like these like really decrepit hood zones. And then people are just like wondering like, why is that? Like, I wouldn't let my grandpa do that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's just family situation. Sometimes it, they don't have the means. The family doesn't have the means. Maybe they're stubborn. They don't want to move. They like could the walkability. Any, yeah, it could be it's anything. Nice, it's next to this like community center yeah. that they like, but mm -hmm. the second they go to the store around the corner from the community center, the risk yep. exposure levels explode. Yeah. Um, people are saying elders deserve protection. A society that doesn't value the elderly and other vulnerable populations is a failed one. Mm -hmm. I hope he finds peace at his destination. Well, I'll say this: these comments, they, I, I agree with them, but what do they really mean? for like the reality on the ground. I don't really know. Mm. Cause I, I feel like a lot of people like 
I don't know. Some people said, don't move to America. It's a third world country with serious issues. Better countries are Canada and New Zealand. They are much safer on a statistical level than the U.S. Of course, um, Andrew, he didn't have the connections to go yeah, to Canada I mean, or New Zealand. But yes, not- yes, theoretically, that's true, though, right? Yeah, but then... It's so crazy because America is such a great land of opportunities and economic opportunities. Especially for the kids and, and the great freedom. Kids, right? Not everybody cares about freedom, but economic opportunities, almost everybody cares about that. So you move here for that, but along with economic opportunity, especially in the cities in America, there is, it's not always that safe. Um, it's, it's spiraled into a discussion about crime, Andrew. Everything from local SF politics, how Chesa Boudin was letting everybody out. This guy who drop kicked him, uh, Ramos Hernandez, he got out in seven months. That's crazy. And then other people are just saying, well, you know, I don't agree with everything in China, but at least criminals aren't coddled there. They got some harsh punishments for people doing everything. Whereas unlike America, we got real soft on crime. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's a a really, really, really dense debate right now on the internet about, like, what should America do about crime Mm. on the streets, right? Um, Somebody just said, you know, sometimes older relatives, they're just so stubborn. They just, like, can't really, like, crunch the numbers of uh, the risk exposure on the street. They just, they just got to live their life. No, it's true. It's hard to tell them that. Other people said, why don't you just, you just need to get out of woke California, man. You need to get to other places. Is it the function of being in a place like SF or California, or is it a function of just American attitudes in general? No, I mean, I'm sure, listen, if you had a son that had a family in space in Arizona, maybe, or like some other city in Texas, maybe, maybe he would have moved there. But ultimately, he got support back in China, and the cost of living is cheaper, and he gets to be back in his own world where he grew up. So it's like, why move to another U.S. city that might be a little safer, but still, it's not going to be right. safer than in Guangzhou. To be honest, it's not going to be. No U.S. city is safer than, like, the big cities in China. And like even almost. a place like Tempe, Arizona, you still got to know English. Like, it's not going to be, like, a hyper-dense yeah. Cantonese community. There's only a few of those. There's only New York. There's only Oakland. There's only SF. And in a way, you could say San Gabriel Valley, but even the walkability is kind of questionable. Yeah. I guess you could walk on Garvey or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, if you just want to... Listen, man, he's old. He just wants... Yeah. I mean, listen, if his, if he only has several more years, he wants to just spend it in yeah, peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's for fine. Sure. I understand. Um, of course, it just turned into a huge argument about uh, politicians. Oh, who did this guy vote for? Did he vote the administration in that is ultimately responsible for the decay of the structures of society or whatever? And, like, you know, it just turned into a whole other thing about that. I mean, we're talking about, like, 50 threads going back and forth. Ultimately, man... You know, wish the best for Rong Xing Liao. I think that one thing that it always strikes me when I hear stories like this is everybody's ex- experience in America as an immigrant is highly variable. I have heard everything from like the Panda Express story, you know what I mean, all the way down to Rong Xing Liao or, or even worse. Mm. And I'm just saying it's dependent on so many different factors. And I guess nobody should try to just think that it's always going to be one way or the other. You got to examine your own situation. Obviously, you want to do the things to put yourself in the best situation from a probability, mathematical, statistical standpoint, having the highest output of success. And like I said, it doesn't mean that he didn't give his kids and his grandkids a better right, chance right, at life. Right. I do not want to insinuate that he made a his mistake, 24 right? years here was a failure at all. I'm just saying his current life is clearly not, <clears throat> could be a lot better. Right, and if right. you have an option to make it better or easier, safer, go do that, right? Um, but, yeah, I'm sure that, you know, he has a son here with grandkids. He has grandkids in America, and that's cool. Maybe the great <clears throat> grandkids get to experience a much different life, I'm sure. Right, so, right, right. anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, I wish anybody like him. He's been through a lot in a, in, a, in a tumultuous area of America that's not safe, and that's unfortunate. But, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's going to live a lot more chill life and at least – he's going to be at peace in his homeland. So I guess that is the story. Sometimes the story of immigrants in America, right? Anyways, you guys let us know in the comments down below. uh, What do you think? And please hit that like button and uh, check out other episodes of the hot pot boys. Hopefully you enjoyed this discussion. You found it interesting until next time we out. Peace. Peace.